In part one, we looked at why some excavations may need supporting and we found out this was due to an imbalance of forces that occurs when you make a vertical cut in the ground. Vertical cuts in a saw can only be supported when the saw has cohesion. Now this is an important concept to get your head around. Cohesion has to be present before a vertical cut can be made and it be left unsupported. The vertical face will not be there if there's no cohesion in the saw and this is because a drained cohesionless saw will always fail when it reaches its internal friction angle. So let's just get this down, write this down, that a vertical cut can only be made in a saw when we have either an undrained cohesion or a drained cohesion for that saw. Otherwise it will not be possible. The saw will always fail when it reaches its internal friction angle. Let's draw a diagram now so we can see the pressure distribution that we've got going on when we have an excavation. So here we have uh, an excavation in a saturated clay and we're just going to call this our H, just the height of the excavation, doesn't really matter what value it is. And we're going to have a neutral axis here where the pressure is zero and at the top we have a negative pressure which pulls the excavation back stopping it falling in and this is due to the cohesion that's present in the soil then at the bottom we have a positive pressure that's trying to push the excavation in so it topples in and this is due to the active pressure in the clay and that's because of the weight of the soil above it causing a horizontal pressure and that's known as the active pressure. So let's just go over that pressure diagram again. Now the way I like to sort of visualize uh, this thing is to draw sort of two 3D particles, one above the neutral axis that we have here and one below. And I just like to have little stick men pushing and pulling so I know what's going on. Now on the top particle where the pressure is negative, now this negative pressure is because cohesion causes tension and pulls the saw back preventing the excavation falling in. That's it. So we have the little stick man here pulling, pulling the particles so we can think about it tension and it's negative holding it back. On the bottom particle the stick man is pushing. Now that's due to the lateral earth pressure which is compression pushing the saw into the excavation. So if you like, the top guy is trying to save the excavation falling in and the bottom guy is trying to push it in, wanting it to fail. And that's because the lateral earth pressure is causing um, a compression and pushing the saw into the excavation. So negative at the top, positive pressure at the bottom. Let's look at now why the pressure diagram is this shape. Well, it starts off at a maximum value at the top here with a negative. So this is due to the cohesion. Say the cohesion had, I don't know, uh, 25 kPa as its cohesion value. Now the pressure diagram is going to start off at a maximum here, 25, because that's its value. It can't, it's not anything else, it's 25. So it's now, now it decreases or increases, should I say, linearly from negative to positive. Why does it do this? Well, it does this because um, the lateral earth pressure builds up and that's proportional to its depth. So there's a, there's a direct relationship here, so it's a linear relationship. And it increases all the way to zero because it's built up. So here, the lateral earth pressure is equal to the cohesion that's present in the salt, the force due to the cohesion and the force due to the lateral earth pressure. Then obviously the depth can increase and continue increasing so 
the lateral earth pressure eventually becomes greater than the pressure due to the cohesion. If we start labelling our diagram now, let's put Z0 on. Z0 represents the distance from the top of the excavation to the neutral axis, which, and then obviously we know that neutral axis represents where the lateral earth pressure is zero. Z0 is the theoretical maximum depth of a tension crack that can form. Now, why, why have you got a tension crack forming here? Well, if we remember the stickman that I drew earlier, the, ne the cohesion is a negative force causing tension. Now, the tension obviously pulls apart and can cause cracks in the top half of this excavation. So, and it can only happen from the top of the excavation to the neutral axis because that's the only place that we've got tension. For the tension crack to be able to form, there has to be a tension force, and this is only occurring in the top half where the pressure is negative. Z0 is the lower bound value for a vertical cut. Now this is important to note, it's the lower bound value, so it's the safest value to go with when specifying a depth for an excavation that needs to be dug. So the fact that it's the lower bound value, it means that there's there would be no plastic deformation of the vertical cut from the ground surface to that depth so the side um, the wall of the excavation if you like the saw wall is very stable because we only have cohesion and that's that's benefiting us because it's pulling it back and there's no forces pushing in so it's safe to leave the excavation unsupported to that depth and this depth is known as the lower bound value the upper bound value for an excavation is known as HC. This is the th maximum theoretical depth for an excavation without support. And this is where the negative forces in the pressure diagram cancel out the positive forces so the overall active lateral earth pressure is equal to zero. Let's continue now labelling our pressure diagram. At the top here, the maximum negative pressure is calculated by minus 2 times Cu, which is the cohesion value for the soil, undrained, times by the square root of Ka, which is the coefficient of active lateral earth pressure. We'll come on to that in a bit, don't worry. At the bottom here of the pressure diagram, it's calculated by the coefficient of lateral earth pressure, Ka, times the unit weight of the soil, times H, which represents the depth that we're looking at um, for the excavation, minus the negative pressure that we have at the top here, so minus 2 times Cu times the square root of Ka. Now Z0 is calculated by 2 times the cohesion divided by the unit weight, gamma, times the square root of the coefficient of la active lateral earth pressure, Ka. Now Z0, I've tried to show on the diagram here, is half the value of Hc. So Hc, therefore, is simply calculated by 2 times Z0, or if you like, 4 times the cohesion divided by gamma, the unit weight, times the square root of Ka, and hopefully you can see the link there just swapping the 2 for a 4 as it's double. Now, if we go on to look a bit further, our Ka, the coefficient of active lateral earth pressure, is calculated by 1 minus sine, the internal friction angle, all divided by 1 plus sine, the internal friction angle. And if we look into that a bit more, if we think about if the saw was undrained, then the internal friction angle would be equal to zero, and if you calculated Ka for that, 
then it would simply equal 1. If you just substitute in uh, the internal fraction in equaling 0 into this equation, then you work out a Ka value of 1. So then Z0 would simplify to 2 times the cohesion divided by gamma, and then obviously Hc would be 4 times the cohesion divided by gamma. So perhaps just have a look at that yourself and see how that works out. But important to note that it's only for undrained conditions when the internal friction angle is equal to zero. Hopefully you've understood what I've tried to cover in this tutorial. So just to wrap it up, we've looked at the distribution of active pressure in saturated clay when we have an excavation and we've looked at how to calculate Z0 and HC, Z0 being our lower bound value, HC being our upper bound value, and the lower and upper just referring to um, a safer value lower and upper being the maximum theoretical depth that we can specify for an excavation. And we started to look at how to calculate the coefficient of active lateral earth pressure and we'll be looking at this more um, when we come to looking at the forces acting on a cantilever and sheet pile in another tutorial. So I hope you understood that and I'll catch you in the next video.